Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. A little while ago, I posted a video on the diamond system. How to make two rail kick shots. And the diamond system is simple, but complex, all at the same time. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, even when you get the mask perfectly. If you have not watched that video, please, Make sure you watch that video. I'm going to put a link about right here. If you don't watch that video, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about here. So it is very important that you watch that video, then come back and watch this video. In the meantime, the way the diamond system works is you count down diamonds from this long rail to correspond with a spot that you're going to hit on the short rail in order to get a specific location, whether it's in the pocket or along here, uh, to hit another ball. Keep in mind that whether or not I place the balls there or not when in these examples, the reason we're doing this is because we're in trouble. We can't get to our ball. Now, sometimes it might be easier to come off a rail over there to hit it. Sometimes it'll be easier to jump to hit it. Sometimes um, you might even shoot a masse to hit it. But the reason we're shooting the two rail kick shot, again, is because we're in trouble. So whether or not I use the balls in our examples, they're always there, okay? So the way the diamond system works, this is a crash course um, for those of you who watched the video but might have forgotten the, the details. Again, if you have not watched the, the diamond system video, watch that video or you're lost. So. If we need to get to this pocket and our cue ball is there and we count up the rail one two three spots and we find our number three spot on this rail which is actually this first diamond because the way we count as a reminder the pocket is one the spot between the pocket and that diamond is two that diamond is three this is four this is five six and seven so what we're trying to do is find a spot three spots up that corresponds with our number three spot on this rail. If we cannot find the spot, we have to come up with a new number. Our actual number is one, two, just about three. We'll be very close using three here and three there. If the cue ball was somewhere else, we'd have to come up with another number because the number that you're shooting through here on this diamond has to correspond with that number as the cue rest over the cue ball. If those things aren't in place, you have to make adjustments. So, if we're three spots up, we hit diamond number, the spot number three, with a little bit of running English, we're going to come to this pocket every time. That's the way the diamond system works. So ever since I made the diamond system video, I've had people say to me, what if the balls are in the middle of the table? Every diamond system video you see, the balls are along this rail. That's usually where it's most powerful. But in the real world, and I like to talk about real world pool, the balls are sometimes in the middle of the table. This is your worst scenario. If it's in the corner, it's easy. You've got a lot of chances to miss that ball and hit it on a rebound. If you're off a half an inch on this rail, you're still going to hit the object ball. If you're off a half an inch here, you're probably going to miss it, okay? So there's a lot of things that can cause you to miss the shot. What we're going to do is reduce some of those things today, and I'll show you how to hit the balls when they're not sitting in the pocket or close to the rail. So what we're going to do is called a parallel shift. The way it works is we find a halfway spot between the cue ball and our object ball and the pocket we're going to be shooting towards. It's always going to be the closest pocket to us. Even if the balls are back here, if this is the pocket that we need to shoot towards, we're going to measure there. If this is the pocket we're going to shoot towards, we'll measure from here. Our halfway spot is right there. The way parallel shift works and why it's called parallel shift, if we keep our cue pointed at this exact same angle and we carry it over and drop it, right over our cue ball here. We can see the spot that we need to hit on this diamond, on this rail, actually it's not that diamond, 
to hit the four ball. That's what we want to do. We want to hit the four ball. If the balls are over here, just randomly situated, we've got balls between them, and we find our halfway spot. This is the halfway spot to make. We carry it over. We find a spot on the rail here. We hit that spot. A little bit of running English. We hit our object ball. That's the way parallel shift works. So guys, the more of these parallel shifts you do, the more you're going to be able to see them in your head and you won't need to measure them out. Measuring them out, you should think of as a training wheel. Okay, It's something that you're using to learn the system. Now, if you parallel shift and you find a spot and you miss it, there is a chance that you put too much speed, too much English, not enough English, not enough speed. You will develop a knack. You will know that's my speed. That's where I need to hit it. You'll develop a knack for this is the correct amount of English. You'll develop a knack for this is my spot. You notice I'm not parallel shifting any of these shots. The reason is if you shoot enough of them, you develop a feel for it and you won't need to measure. All right, you've never seen Shane measure a parallel shift. And you guys know how I feel about instinctive shooting and instinctive bank shots. Well, the same thing happens with um, the diamond system, which of course you watched already or you're not watching this yet. Same thing happens with the diamond system and um, two rail kick shots and parallel shifting. Those are aids to help you develop a knack for it. Eventually you'll, you'll, you'll see the balls on the table, you'll know I need to go here. And you're going to come to the pocket. All right? So, practice your parallel shifts. Practice putting the right amount of English on it. I tend to put more English on the ball than a lot of, people's, a lot of people do. Um, part of it is the cue that I use applies more English. Part of it is that I grew up putting a lot of English on shots. I grew up playing, when I went off, went off of three rails, I put high on it. So I, I put a lot of things on the ball that you should not be putting on there, especially not yet while you're, while you're learning this stuff. But you need to find out what your speed is. Because if you're coming short or long, okay, if you're shooting these shots, if you measure them out and you're coming a little bit short or a little bit long, there's something that's going wrong. Either your speed is not right, your um, amount of English is not correct, your, uh, it could be the rails. I've played, I have a cousin that uh, his table has dead ass rails and um, none of these three cushion or two cushion shots work on his table. So it could be the table, but if, if you see a normal bounce on the table and you're having trouble doing the two rail and the three rail kick shots, chances are you haven't calibrated your stroke. So, of all the things that can cause you to miss, let's talk about those things. One, are you putting just a little bit of English? I try to consciously put just less than a half of one tip of English on the shots. Uh, when I'm playing on most tables, I'm going to hit the ball with just English, no high or low on the shot. That will change the path of the ball. So you might be putting high or low on the shot if you can't get to your spot. Your speed, if you are shooting it too fast, you're going to come short or long. If you shoot it too slow, you're going to be off. You notice that all of these shots, whether I parallel shift or do the math or whatever the case, I hit them just about with the same amount of speed. Any change in speed changes the shot. So you need to make sure that you, you have consistent speed. Pull is not easy. Just because I teach you a magic formula to hit the shot doesn't mean that you're going to hit it every time. So it's just like any shot. You know what the formula is to make this shot. But if you're off just a little bit, you're not going to make it. The ball's traveling 
six feet down table. It's hitting another ball that has to travel another two or three feet depending on your table. There's a lot of room for error here. Now, if I'm playing a parallel shift or I'm playing a diamond system, the ball is traveling more than, in this case, very close to 12 feet. A lot can happen over 12 feet. So the ball's coming up here, it's coming up here, and it's coming all the way back here. If I'm off with, with any of my calculations or my English or, or my speed or anything like that, I can very easily miss the shot. But if you dial in your speed for your shot, you dial in your English, you're going to make it consistently. So I beg you, practice these shots, especially if you're a nine ball player, uh, you got to have this because the, um, the people you play are going to D you up knowing that you don't know how to get around the table. So practice your parallel shifts. If you do it long enough, they'll become second nature to you. And at that point, you won't need to do your measurements. But in the meantime, do your measurement, find your halfway spot, find your spot on the rail, and you'll know where to hit it. Now, I'm going to let you guys behind the curtain. You know there's guys out there that hate when I teach you guys this stuff. I get messages, why are you teaching beginners how to do these shots? Usually it's from a guy that doesn't want you to know. But I like to let you behind the curtain because the more you know, the more likely you are to stick with pool because the more likely you are to enjoy it. And the better you are and the more you know, the more you stick with pool and the more likely it is that the sport is going to exist 10, 15 years from now. Pool is an endangered species. So get good at it and be one of those people that's causing them to live on. Anyway, that said, to the guys that don't like me teaching people how to do this stuff, somebody twitch your ass, okay? So, here we go. Letting you behind the curtain. When I do parallel shift, and you guys realize I don't do it as often because I know where the spots are, but when you see me parallel shift, if I have to parallel shift, I bring my cue down just like that. You see how I rested it on the rail there? All right, I have Kamui's stupid expensive chalk on the tip of my cue. And the downside of this chalk is that it leaves marks on the table all over the place. Well, here's my little secret. When I bring my cue over and I slide it down like that, it leaves a spot on the table, right there on that rail. Even if you stick it under the rail, there's a spot there. Masters doesn't so much but this Kamui absolutely does leave a spot. So once I do that parallel shift, if I do need to parallel shift, I've left the target spot on that rail. I can brush it off later, I can leave it there. I don't care what you do, but that's a little inside information. So anyway, that's how parallel shifts work. That's how you hit the balls when they are in the middle of the table. And make sure you review both videos. Um, make sure when you do your parallel shifts, your cue doesn't move around. And make sure you get your speed right. Thank you for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you're entered to our contest by subscribing. Subscribing and hitting something in the comments will qualify you for whatever contest that we're running. Thank you very much, and um, there should be contests rules in the description of this video. If you don't see any, there's no current contest. Have a great day, and please subscribe. A little while ago, I posted a video on the diamond system. If you have not, before you watch this video, or you'll have no idea what's going on. I don't have a dog. But my neighbor on that side and my neighbor on this side both have dogs and they like to meet halfway and bark at each other. Shut up!